Good day traders, welcome back by a new video of trading supply in a month, supply in a month trading talks. Uh, decided to do a little video for everyone on the social media that is following me and I appreciate that. So I thank you all for that. Um, new YouTube video, pretty nice video. And I will explain a little bit more about supply in a month. Um, you can trade any strategy you want and it can work, you know. Um, we have traders that trading supply in a month. We have traders that trading support resistant. Um, traders that trading trend lines. Traders that trading pure structure, um, momentum, stuff like that. You can trade it all, you know. And it can work also for you, you know. Um, supply in the month is simply um, proper institutional levels. Uh, because we as retail traders don't move the market, okay? Banks and financial institutions are uh, move the market and we are just a little piece of that, okay? So I respect all traders, even if you're trading support and resistant trend lines, it really doesn't matter, you know? As long as you are consistent, profitable, using the right money management and um, yeah, following your plan, you know? Following your plan. For example, we're looking to uh, GBP out right now, okay? Uh, we as supply and demand traders take or, or benefit from um, momentum, okay? Momentum you can find on the higher time frames. For example, right here on the 4H time frame, you see definitely that price is pushing to the upside. So there are, are more buyers than sellers in the markets. And after each push, you see a little correction in price, okay? And within those moves, there are supply and amount areas created. And if you are pacing enough, you can take your benefit from that, you know? So it's our simply turning backs. For example, this is not a rangy market. This is a trending market on GBP out. And you see candles from the same size and the same height. For example, you count the candles right here. You see one, two, three, four, five, and so on. 20 hours of uh, bullish momentum and after that you see a little correction in the price this correction is a little bit deeper and you see a nice level created within this level so you see it turning back to this level which is simply an institutional level and um, there is something happening in that level there are orders located in that level and that is where we take the or benefit from as supply and demand traders uh, you need a lot of patience to trade this way, I think trading overall is trading a lot of patience. And, um, you know, that is why I'm telling you, you can trade support resistance, supply and amount, whatever, you know. But to go on in this video, you can see that price is pushing to the upside. If you're moving to lower time frames, you can spot the waves, okay? So we have identified a proper demand level right here. Okay, you see a push away from that. And you see a nice turning back, okay? And to give you a little hint, um, the first and the second time back to a supply or the month level are most often the strongest touches, okay? Um, why? Because there are still a lot of buying and selling pressure in these levels, okay? Some traders will call it order blocks. Some traders will call it supply and a month levels. Um, yeah, that's not the same as support and resistance. Support and resistance are simply historical price areas where price is turning back, where our support and resistance trader take the benefit from, um, you know, the more touches, the stronger it is. That is what the support and resistance trading is doing. We as supply and demand traders uh, mainly looking for fresh price areas. Um, and we believe that the first and the second time, and sometimes the third time, is the strongest touch back to a supply and a month area because there were orders located, okay? And this is this is the simplest uh, way I can explain it. For example, you see another the month area created right here. You see, again, a lack to the upside, okay? Then you see a turning back of price to this base. If you mapping a line mid-range of this demand area, you can see a nice 
liquidity push within this level, which is sim simply an order grab to push the price away from this level of demand, okay? So again, buyers are willing to buy within this level. Supply and demand. We'll show you a few other examples. For example, right here, you can see prices turning back to this base, creating a new lag to the downside push up. Second time back. So this is why I'm telling you um, first and second time back are most strongest touches um, for supply and amount areas. I have draw a few supply and amount areas within here. Okay, you can see price have created a nice lag to the upside again. And now it's just a matter of time to wait to price turn turn back to this base spot or nice liquidity move for potential long. Okay, um, got the question a lot. Which is the best time frame to map out your supply and amount areas? Personally, uh, me, I like to use the 4H for overall direction momentum. Um, spot the momentum, identify momentum, and mapping out my levels um, from the 4H, 1H, minute 30 to trade off, and then using the lower time frames as my guideline, okay? Because you can spot nice liquidity moves on lower time frames and um, to base your trading off. Uh, to be honest, I don't have really a perfect uh, time frame that I... Um, always trade off, you know. Sometimes I can have my um, my confirmations on the minute 30 only. And sometimes I move to lower time frames, for example, minute 15, minute 10 to trade off, okay? But I'm a very patient trader. I like to use fresh levels and I wait patiently to price turn back to those levels to trade off. Why? Because that would give me probability and I can trade uh, with the overall direction, with the big boys, uh, definitely not moving the market, like I said, but it gives me high probability trading, um, you know. But once again, you can use trend lines, support and resistance, supply and amount. Everything can work for you. Um, I have tested all in the in the last years, but supply and amount is definitely the thing for me. And I traded for many, many years now. And... Uh, yeah, you need to be aware of those levels because that levels are pretty important. Of course, you should choose the higher time frames as well, daily 4H, because this, that, that is where you can see the big shifts incoming and you can you can trade supply and amount trading on the higher time frames as well. Uh, I use them more for for uh, large reverses incoming, change in structures and uh, so on. And on the lower time frames, we aim for... Uh, break of structures, um, yeah, stuff like that, you know. Uh, for example, if you're moving on to gold, um, want to give also a little example on that. I have highlighted a couple of levels. For example, right here, we have a daily level on gold. This is also the reason why price spiked in that 9010 level. Um, and we saw a little reversal right here. It's Friday right now, so um, New York Open will uh, be an hour from now. And um, yeah, can be a little rangy on the Fridays or we see a nice large pushing coming, um, less push, you know, till market closure at end of this day. We are now almost at the New York session and you see that gold, um, 26th of May, two days ago, spike it in this 90.12 level, 90.10 level, and we saw a nice shift coming, okay? Um, this was overall bias market. This is overall still a bias market, but this is how you can apply the larger time frames, um, strong levels. So you see a little change in structure right now coming. You see from bullish to bearish, but overall this direction is still still, still bullish. And I do believe that price can push a little bit more to the downside 
And from this level, 180, um, 8080, which is simply a round number, also a nice tip to give you those round numbers are really powerful. 1880, let me map that out for you. 1880, which is simply a round number, which is an institutional number. So I believe if price will spike to in this level of demand, that we can, can see a nice shift, you know. Uh, prices never fall instantly 500 pips to the downside. Market always in raves and new supply and amount levels will be created. So simply, I do like to trade structure. Um, for example, after the spike right here, we saw a nice base grading right here, which is a supply area. You can see price fell to the downside, first time back to this level. And then you see the first potential trade incoming around this level, okay? More about this, I explain in my education as well. So most Forex carpet traders in my community know how to act on this, but this is the first time back. And that's also what I explained on GBP out, those first and second touches time back to supply and amount based trades are probability okay definitely probability so you can see price have now a price range between this low and this high this is the range we have now but i do believe if price will break to this level we were looking for 1818 8080 sorry and from this level, we would see how price will, will react to this level for potential longs or a continuation to the downside. But the overall direction, if you're looking from the high, higher time frames, is still long. You see a lot of bias pressure in these markets. Right here, you can see the nice waves till we had a daily level and then we see something interesting happening, okay? Um, if we fell down below this structure right here, I do be believe we will see more um, bearish momentum, so more sells. If not, we can we can push higher. Okay, keep that in consideration. DXY is a nice, um, yeah, dollars do dollar currency index. It's also a nice thing uh, to keep in correlation with gold overall. You know, you can see also some old levels and how perfectly respect these levels are. Okay. You see the deep liquidity spike within this level. And the, then we see the turnaround first time back, second time back, major shift to the downside again. DXY is overall. Um, yeah, down with, of course, nice pullbacks, okay? For example, back to this level right here, test, down, and so on. As long as we remain uh, below this level right here, we still gonna move to the downside. That means gold will push higher, okay? That is the idea with the correlation. And this is also how you can apply those stuff if you're moving uh, higher i do believe that gold will move to the downside you know but you know and i'm not gonna predict your future i simply trade what i see not what i think okay little supply and amount trading talks and how i look into the market hope you all enjoy it overall um yeah we'll we'll record a new video pretty soon again to talk even more about it if you are interested, feel free to enroll. There is a powerful masterclass course available. 17 modules, all based of supply and amount trading. And uh, yeah, if you like to improve your trading, it's great. You know, wish you all a happy weekend. Happy Friday. Make the best of it. Do some back testing and uh, enjoy the weekend. See you soon. Bye-bye.